to another uh, episode of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Training Course. Please be seated. Okay, so tonight we are going con to continue where William left off in the acceptance manual. Oh, we got a little fogginess going on here. There we go. Okay. And, uh, all right. And we'll be referring also to the character unit tonight, uh, going back a little bit. We'll be starting on page 11. If you want to join me there, if you have a book, that'd be great. <clears throat> Now, if you'll notice on page 11, uh, let's see, William left off about halfway, a little over halfway down the page where it starts out and says, ironically. We're, we're going to get there in just a minute, but first I'd like to revisit a couple of things that he mentioned because they were so very important. I, I know it was probably uh, some of the things were probably a little rough for somebody, for some people to hear probably when it was talking uh, especially about tobacco for instance and some of the ingredients that are contained within that tobacco that possibly you might not have known was even there you know um, so what I'd like to do is look at what it says at the very top of the page it says that knowledge is power now, what I would ask you is, the power that you gain from knowledge, what would you use that power for? What purpose would it be for? Would it be for something great? Would it be for the building up of others? Or would it be for the tearing down of others? You know, power can be used in, in different ways. I would also ask you to look at... Um, the first sentence, taking your education seriously. Now, now I'm talking to teachers here, or, or those that desire to become teachers of the peaceful solution. So I'd like you to look at that sentence and take it seriously. Taking your education and becoming a peaceful solution teacher seriously is another way you can demonstrate that you're a unique individual with moral potential. Not only that, it's critical that you take it seriously. Let's look at, um, we'll, we'll get back to that in just a moment, but let's look at page 10 over here for a minute. Every year increasing numbers of teenagers are victims of violent crimes. There's not one city in the United States with a population of over a thousand that has not experienced these violent crimes. So think for a minute. If someone in your family or a friend were in danger of being a victim of a violent crime, would you not be worried? Don't be upset with your parents for wanting to know where you are at all times and giving you a curfew. They are trying to keep you safe. Trying to keep you safe. Number two, health studies show that the human body, especially the brain, will not develop properly unless it receives proper nourishment and plenty of rest. Okay, so once again, this is your parents, you know, helping trying to keep you safe and healthy. Number three, being with or around the wrong people at the wrong time can wreck your entire life. Following the crowd, underline that for, for a moment. If you have a book, will you underline following the crowd? Following the crowd can lead to making bad choices you could regret for the rest of your life. I'm going to stop there for a moment and think back and I want you to think back, too, if you would. Now, William talked a lot about the tobacco and other addictive substances last week. And I got to say that I, I, that I know a lot of people, including myself, that in following the crowd at a young age, not knowing any better, having not been taught the peaceful solution character education, and even though my parents did everything they could to try to keep me healthy and try to show that they cared about my safety and so forth, I still chose to follow the crowd and start smoking. 
That smoking continued for most of my life until about 22 years ago. So I know a little bit about it and some of the other substances that were also uh, listed. And that's why when, and I know William would tell you the same thing, when we talk to you about these things, it's not coming from somebody who's never been there, somebody who's never had to overcome these things. But at some point in time in our life, we did what that first sentence says on page 11, we started taking it seriously, taking our education seriously. Now, I'm not saying this at all to belittle anybody, to run anybody down, to make you feel bad. I just would like to get across to you that you've got to take it seriously if you desire to become a teacher of the peaceful solution. <clears throat> Look at number four. There are many ways to wreck your health and ruin your opportunity for a great life. And of course it says alcohol abuse, nicotine, there it is again, very addictive, affects lungs, brain, liver, shortens lifespan, all these things. Let me, uh, let me show you this real quick. I, I, looked up, I looked up the word addicted. You know, of course, I, I thought I really knew what it was uh, because of being told that for a large portion of my life. But I looked it up, and this is the um, Merriam-Webster dictionary right there. And um, let's see, maybe we can see it better like this. Here we go. Exhibiting a compulsive, chronic, physiological, or psychological need for a habit-forming substance, behavior, or activity. All right? Now, keep in mind, when I'm talking about addiction, I'm not just talking about uh, cigarettes or alcohol. There's many addictions that a person could have. Okay, another thing says, strongly inclined to do, use, or indulge in something repeatedly. Now, going on down through there, you'll also find where it says uh, addicted, you've given in to something, given up. I thought about that. That one struck me harder than any of the rest, that, that you've given up if you're addicted to something. And I thought, I thought of myself and thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I've never heard it described that way in all my life, that, that I've just given up. So, <clears throat> having, having given up, and, and I'm going to use go back to the smoking for a minute, but having given up, being addicted to that, that thing, that cigarette, that nicotine, um, ha having given up, I, I don't believe we're taking our education seriously like we possibly should. Don't get me wrong, there's, like I said, there's many other things you could be addicted to. Many things that people can't see on the outside that you might be addicted to. Some things going on in your mind and so forth. And again, that too. You've got to take your education seriously in the peaceful solution for us to continue growing and for us to get this message across to the students. I, I want you to think momentarily how silly it would look. Well, let me first say it wasn't but about 30 years ago that they pretty much banned smoking in public places. Somewhere around 30, maybe 35 years ago, something like that. It's when they banned smoking in public places and in places of business and so forth. And could you imagine us sitting here right now, and I was going to try to find one and bring it, and then I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. But could you imagine me sitting here talking to you all about self-control or the peaceful solution and, and not doing things to hurt yourself or others and sitting here and puffing on a cigarette? <laughs> could you imagine that? Does it create like a funny picture in your mind? Because it, it's, it would be just totally ridiculous. Now, now think if you were a teacher of the peaceful solution and you were uh, holding a class and, you know, you went outside for a break and... Of course, if you're a smoker, you get a break. What are you going to do? You're going to smoke a cigarette. And your students see you smoking a cigarette. Or they see you go to the bar and get a drink between class or something during your breaks. Can, can you imagine that for a minute? 
So I, I want to ask you, how can others, how can we teach students, re, let's read that first sentence again on page 11, taking your education seriously is another way you can demonstrate that you are a unique individual with moral potential. How can we possibly teach students, now we can read them these words, but how can we possibly teach them to take things seriously in regards to what we're talking about if we ourselves are still partaking of these things? I'm going to tell you to stop smoking because it's bad for you, and then I'm going to go smoke a cigarette? <laughs> That's not right. <clears throat> So, so I'm going to ask you again, I want you to think about the, the knowledge being power. Knowledge is power, and we know that. Power for what purpose? Are you, you going to use it for great things and to build people up, or are you going to use it for you know, wicked things and tear people down? And all of this is part of learning how to accept self and others. Uh, you know, part of, part of uh, overcoming any addictions and everything is is learning how to accept ourself and also showing acceptance to others. If you see somebody with an addiction, you know, you don't necessarily shun yourself from them. You want to teach them. You want to show them the right way. You want to have that care and compassion to help relieve their suffering. And show them how you did it. Show them how you overcame these things. You know, between, between all of this vast... Um, class of men that are here tonight for the peaceful solution teacher training I would imagine there are there's stories real stories real life stories of just about anything that you could think that needed to be overcome that would have been bad for you and for others or you could help people overcome these things and while teaching the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Let's continue on here for a moment. So, you have a responsibility to continuously pursue positive moral ways to improve yourself. See, pursuing the positive moral ways to improve yourself. Not that we're all perfect. We're not perfect right now. Getting a sound education is one way in which you can do this. And, of course, it mentions English and social studies and math and so forth. But a sound moral education will assist you in being aware of what's going on in your community, nation, and world. Being well-informed, just like with this addiction thing. People are knowledgeable. knowledgeable well-informed people are knowledgeable about the world around them. They pay attention to influences around them. And they, and they recognize if those influences are negative or if they're positive. They gather all the facts, then test and prove what's correct before making a decision. So even if you gathered the facts and decided, well, it's not hurting anyone but me. Of course, in any of these addictive substances, you would be wrong. It has a ripple effect that affects many other people. So it doesn't just affect you, but, but I want to take you back again. Are you taking your education seriously? Now let's start right there on page 11, where William left off, and we're going to restart, I guess. It says, ironically, many teens report that youths who are smart are picked on. They are often called nerds or geeks. Hey, as hurtful as those names might be, what's even worse is neglecting your education. Be smart, studious, and aware of what's going on around you. People who are informed and determined to maintain a positive moral character will not jeopardize their, self, their safety, health, or future. As a teenager, as an adult, why, why would you even be thinking about these things? These things. That, let, let me read this again. People who are informed and determined to maintain, so you're determined to maintain a positive moral character, and you don't want to jeopardize your safety, health, or future, or anybody else's. Now, what would make you think of these things? Why would you even care to build a positive moral character? 
or not jeopardize your safety or that of others, in fact. Why would a teenager? Think about that. There's teenagers in here tonight. All of you have been teenagers before at one time in your life. And as a teenager, what would make you think of this right here? Why would you care? As an adult, why would you care? Well, let's go to... um, Let's go back over to the character unit for a minute and go to page XVII, which I believe that would be 17, I think, if I remember. Okay. So, on page XVII in the introduction, about halfway down the page, it's the fourth paragraph, it says, We have noticed that these lessons of the peaceful solution, this is in the introduction, are even more effective when the teacher encourages the practice of the principles of the lesson throughout the day. What better way to encourage this than to be an example yourself in doing so? And let me just say, whether whether it's the addiction of, you know, the the nicotine, the alcohol, the drugs, whether it's that, or whether it's the, the addiction of bullying, driving like a lunatic, you know, not listening, not caring about others' needs. Have you given up? Remember, that's part of what an addiction is, is giving up. Have you given up on these things? Have you given up not being a bully? Have you given up not listening or caring about what others' needs are? You know, so let's look at the whole thing. So what better way to encourage the practice of these principles than to be the example yourself? But the practice of the principles of the lesson throughout the day as incidents arise between teacher and student or student and student. You get that. Incidents might arise between teacher and student. The teacher still needs to communicate with the student, not shut them off and say, you know, be quiet. You have nothing to say here. I'm the one doing the talking. The teacher needs to communicate. And also the student needs to communicate. The student can't just shut down. You can't just throw a fit. You've got to communicate. Please remember that your class will be an example simply because character education is introduced into the school curriculum. I'm going to continue on here of the why, of the why any of us would care about this. Teachers are the true leaders of the world. All teachers now have the opportunity to make a great change in the character of their students. With the use of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, you're not only teaching, You are actually molding leaders who will use what you are instilling in them to bring about better living conditions in this world. And how are you instilling it in them? Because it's not just the words we say. It's our actions that help instill these things within our students. It's the example that we put forth. We must not fail to build moral values in the students we are now teaching. This will not just reflect in the child, but in the entire world around us. That is, your leadership will be reflected in the actions of the leaders you have taught and will teach. Okay? So, here is why. Remember, the question was asked, why why would we care? Why would we care about any of this, you know? Uh, I'm going to read it to you again. It's the last sentence on page 11. It says, people who are informed and determined to maintain a positive moral character, what would make you, in, what would make you determined to keep that positive moral character? And why would you not jeopardize your own safety, health, or future, or that of others? Well, here's why. On page LP1A in the character unit, of course we're referring back to the character unit quite a bit, And halfway down, uh, that'll be the second paragraph, I believe, there. So this is the reason. This is the reason you would want to take this seriously. Remember, in the first sentence, 
uh, page 11 in the acceptance manual. Knowledge is power. It says taking your education seriously is another way you can demonstrate. So let's get serious. As educators and role models, back on page LPA in the character unit, as educators and role models, there are questions that we must consider if we desire to stop the violence and risk-taking behaviors that are, that are destroying the lives of our children even before they've reached adulthood. Notice the, if we desire to stop it. If we desire. Take those words to heart. Get serious about it. Do you desire this for real? If we desire, all right, continuing on, if you were to pull what students want for their futures, none of them would say they want to be the victim of a, of a school shooting or to contract HIV or a host of other sexually transmitted, transmitted diseases that cripple or kill. On the contrary, they would say that they have hopes and dreams to pursue the career of their choice, to start families of their own, or to succeed in a healthy, joyous life. There's many things that take place in people's lives. Uh, in fact, on page 12 that we'll be going to, it talks about making, uh, you know, turning your lemons into lemonade. And so there's many things that can take place in a person's life that the person had no control over. And we'll get to that uh, momentarily, hopefully. But along the way, when some of these things occur, People tend to, sometimes people tend to throw their dreams to the side. They tend to give up, back to the addicted thing. They tend to stop pursuing a career. Or they don't care if they ever start a family of their own, at least at, at some young ages. Or they don't care about having a healthy, joyous life. They just want to do what comes at the moment, you know. They just, uh, uh, they... You know, they figure, uh, you know, life can change so quickly and turn against me. Why not live it to the max, you know? I think there used to be some type of, uh, of a beer commercial on TV years ago that said, go for the gusto, you know, you only live once. <laughs> and, and so it was, it was actually influencing you to do it now. You know, do everything you want to do that you could possibly have in your mind to do. And then with the music and the other influences in the world, that, that um, the negative influences, the negative music uh, that, can be, that you can hear on almost every channel, um, there's songs like, uh, uh, you know, free bird, you got to be free as a bird, you got to do everything you want to do now. Um, many songs um, relate to, you know, uh, do it, just do it, just do it now. Commercials, songs, everything, these influences. We've been through a lot of them and heard about a lot of them in the Peaceful Solution. But <clears throat> these are the things that can destroy a young mind if that mind is not prepared through the Peaceful Solution on how to deal with these things. So it's our responsibility as educators. This is the getting serious thing, okay? It's our responsibility as educators, parents, and role models to give our children the skills and knowledge to resist the negative influences and to attain a positive moral character to succeed in life. Think back. You guys that are... Most of you, I think, in here are younger than me, but some are about the same age or a little bit older. If only I had these words of wisdom, not just the words, but, but if, I, if I had caring teachers that taught me that no matter what would come my way, that taught me to be prepared for the curveballs and pitfalls, that taught me how to make lemonade out of lemons and so forth, if I would have had that, how my life could have changed. I have to look back and think about those things and how it would have been different. And so, so how much more would I want to instill this within, within my students? I would want to instill that, these, these, this positive character, 
this positive moral character in them so they don't have to go through the same things. Because it's been a hard, tough road, and all of you sitting in here, I'm sure, can attest to that fact that it's been a hard, tough road in turning away from some of the things that we've turned away from in learning to protect ourselves and others and have a positive moral character. So it's our responsibility as educators. That's the seriousness. That's the reason why. That's the reason why you should care. That's the reason you should be determined to maintain a positive moral character. So let, let us begin to teach our children the lessons that will guide them for a lifetime. And this can be accomplished by giving them a sound moral foundation through character education. It doesn't say they might not, you know, run off course a little bit from time to time. You know, we have to be prepared to kindly guide them back on course. We have to kindly show them the road map again. We have to kindly show them the road less traveled and, tell, and explain to them and be an example to them on how if they would listen and take these words to heart that it would be better for them in the long run and they will have a joyful, peaceful life. The Peaceful Solution Character Education Program was designed to teach children the importance of having a positive moral character. They will learn how character is developed and how it can be implied, applied to improve every aspect of life. And this program is presented in a clear, easy to read format that the 11 to 13 year old will identify and connect with. So, if you look at the bottom paragraph on that page, it's LP1B in the character unit. It says, as teachers and ed educators, we have a great responsibility in, re in preparing today's children for tomorrow's world. By learning why a positive character is important, they can avoid making choices that will negatively affect them for the rest of their lives. Who they will become and what they deem important depend largely upon what they are taught today. And don't forget, the way that others are taught is not just by the words that we speak and the words that they read, but by the example that the teacher puts forth and the care and concern that is shown. And we're training to be teachers of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, and that's why I'm speaking to you tonight about that. I, I have to look and say to myself, get serious, you know? Get some of these things out of your life, man. Get serious about this. How can you possibly teach others to overcome these things if you don't do them yourself? Over the years, I've had to do that from time to time, just like we all do. So it's the goal of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program to teach children to develop a positive character and to build a better world world one person at a time and that's exactly what we're talking about doing here um, let me see on uh, page XV uh, again talking about this uh, being serious and the influence from the teacher and and how silly it would look for us to be smoking on a cigarette while teaching others that they should take care of their health and so forth, you know. And I'm sorry I keep going back to that. It's just that um, that's one of the things that sticks in my mind because it hasn't been that long ago that it was really, you know, pretty much banned everywhere in public. Um, the author of The Peaceful Solution says, Thinking back on my early school years, I remember many of the things taught by my teachers that were not part of the regular curriculum. And it was those teachings that influenced his thinking. Many of them still guide his actions today. And all of you can think back and think back about a couple teachers probably, whether grade school or junior high or high school, or as an adult that have had an extreme effect on your life, where you can go back in time, if you will. You know, the use of the, your mind, how you can draw up things, draw up some positive things, learn to draw up those positive things, and... Think about the teachers that had positive things to teach you and say to you and the things that really that you took to heart and, and that had an effect on you all your life. Um, 
He says, I remember very early in childhood, even before my school years, things my parents taught me that actually guided my interaction with others. And one statement that he heard more than once from his father in the face of some frustrating event was, son, two wrongs do not make a right. Now, that's major right there. Of course, had his father's words uh, not mentioned in, in his hearing, but other more damaging words such as, uh, get even, fight back, I'll never forgive you for that, or I'll get you for that. He might have treated others differently. So if you've had these types of things said to you and you relive those moments from time to time, we have to start focusing on the positive things. We have to start focusing on the positive words that we've heard. Sometimes we remember these negatives and, and we remember some of the, the more negative things that occurred in our life because of our our, uh, our, our frame of mind at the time when these took place. Possibly it was a traumatic event. Traumatic events stick with people. You know, it gets the hormones flowing and adrenaline and uh, some of the things that you might have been doing might have had the dopamine, dopamine flowing really heavy. And so you remember these things and, and when you look for that feeling again, you know, you go back and, and relive that moment. And that's not great for us in a lot of cases. You know, sometimes when people said some, some great things to me, uh, you know, I don't know, there might have been a little dopamine flowing there or something, or a little bit of adrenaline or something, a little excitement, but um, possibly not as much as some of the other things. So, so what, I'm, what I'm trying to get across tonight to the teachers is that getting serious means looking at these things and and getting serious about getting them out of our lives. Um, on page two of the character unit, I, I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing, but I want to, I, I, said, I said something earlier that, you know, uh, a child or an adult, for that matter, can get off course after they've even been shown the map you know, here, here's, you're, you're going from here to over here, and here's the path laid out for you. They can kind of get off course and make a few turns the wrong way, and so it's our job to get them back on that road less traveled because, because the path that, uh, uh, of excitement and, and fun and games and, and living every day to its fullest, they say, um, which they don't really know what that means by any means. But, you know, you can see what all that leads to by looking at the outcome of people. You can look at some of the richest people in the world and see that they're getting divorced from lifelong uh, uh, mates um, and, and leaving their families in turmoil. Or they're committing suicide or, you know, you name it losing their fortunes and so forth. You can look at, um, at uh, people not quite so famous and you can see the same things occurring in people's lives. Uh, most people my age have a medicine chest full of, um, of drugs that they have to take every day. You know? And don't get me wrong, if the doctors told you that you need this to take it for some of the things that are taking place in your body right now from from previous things we've done to ourselves, well, you know, you might need to continue doing that. I'm not saying don't do that. Don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to say is that these things came to us from our choices earlier in life. And so you teenagers, you younger people out there, you know, you can turn that around now to where these things don't occur with you by taking the road less traveled. That's page 2 in the character unit. This all goes with knowledge being power. And that's why we're going through this. I keep referring back to the character unit, but I think we're probably going to be doing this throughout the rest of the units um, because it would be hard not to. That's the foundation that was laid for us. So we've got to go back to it from time to time. So a road less traveled... You know, it says, here's what it all boils down to. You don't have to take this road. You can take the road less traveled. That's what we're trying to get across to you as teachers now 
so that you can impart this to your students. It's not going to be the most popular road or the road that your friends are taking. Life is about making choices. The choices you make, the ones that could save your life, will be based on your development of a positive moral character. And the only way to develop that positive character is to start paying attention to what's going on on the inside. That's why I told you about how some of these memories are formed, how they instill themselves within our mind and our heart. And the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, if you look at the bottom of the book right here, it says to change the hearts and minds. See? So that's what we've got to do. That's what we've got to, we've got to impart our knowledge, our power for the benefit of mankind, for the benefit of the students. We have to be able to impart that to them. And what better way than overcoming these things ourselves so that we can share with them and, and uh, you know, tell them what worked for you. So in the, uh, in the bottom paragraph on page two, the road less traveled, it says, we believe that the principles contained in this book when applied to your everyday life will bring you such abundant living. Now this is living every day to its fullest, okay? You will be forever appreciative. And now it's up to you to take hold of the principles that bring success and never let anyone deter you from that path. And so that's what we're talking about when we are talking about, um, on page 11, uh, up at the top where it says, I'm going back there now, taking your education seriously, you know, because when you think about it, what did you take seriously as a child or a teen? Probably not a whole lot, you know, but you can, you can start now. And if you are a child or a teenager, you can start taking this serious right now. And then in the bottom sentence of that page, page 11, it says, remember, people who are informed and determined to maintain a positive moral character. And I'm sorry I'm reading this so many times, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Because I, I, that's the way I can understand it if it's kept simple. And so I'm sure there's others out there that, that are like me that would like it to be kept simple. So people who are informed and determined to maintain a positive moral character will not jeopardize their safety, health, or future. So that's why, as a teenager or an adult, that's why we should be thinking about these things. Everything we went over is why we should be thinking about these things. <clears throat> so again, if, if you are one of those that still has these addictions that are, that are you know, in, in, in your life, and you want to become a teacher of the peaceful solution, we need to work real hard about getting these things out of our lives, whatever type of addiction they might be, whether it be the alcohol, the cigarettes, the drugs, or anything else. I'm talking to everybody, whether you be sitting here or whether you be out there watching this on the Internet. We need to take it seriously, okay? Get serious about our education. Look at what you're doing. Look at it right now today. Don't give up. Remember, one of the definitions of addiction is giving up. If you've just given up, given up trying not to do it, you know it's unhealthy for you, but you continue on, and you give up trying, well, don't do that. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I remember quitting some of these things many times. Quitting, but not stopping forever, you know, until... I started finding out about this peaceful solution. And when I started finding out about this, I'm like, hey, look, this is serious stuff here. Let me get serious about it. Let's go ahead and turn over to page 12. Now, I mentioned before that some of the things that, that take place in our lives, some of the things that, you know what, before we do this, let's go back to... Uh, the lesson plan for a moment. I'm sorry. Let's go back to the lesson plan and um, and look at. Uh, of course, we just went over the cold hard facts and knowledge is power in uh, procedure four, and um, you can gain that knowledge, of course, to help help you develop your full potential. The knowledge in the peaceful solution. And then uh, in Procedure 5, it says explain it by focusing on what cannot be controlled, which is what we're fixing to talk about that right now. 
But by focusing on what cannot be controlled, we forfeit the opportunity to change and improve the things that can be controlled. Your focus is all on something you can do nothing about. You're not even going to be worried about the things you can, and you're going to fall into some of these, some of this feeling of giving up, you know, of these addictive behaviors. It says to ask students to name a few things that you do have control over in your lives. And, um, and I've asked a few students a few things, what they do have control over, and one of the answers was, well, I can control when I wake up in the morning, providing they do wake up. You don't really have any control over that. But uh, if everything goes as, as uh, planned, and hopefully you have another, another day, you can control what time you wake up. You can control what time you go to sleep. You can do these things. Uh, I was told that you can control to some degree what you eat. You know, if you have it and it's available, you can choose which one of those items you want to eat, right? You can control these things. You can control what you wear. As long as you have a choice of what to wear, you can control it. And then it says to have students read the section entitled, When Life Hands You Lemons. Um, it's found on page 12, and let's go ahead and go there. But I want you to be thinking about any difficult experiences that you might have had in your life and how you handled it. We're not going to ask you to share that with us tonight, but I'd like for you to be thinking about any difficult experiences you had and how you've handled it. And I've talked to a lot of you in this room here tonight, and I know a lot of you have had some very difficult situations in your life, as, as I have too. Uh, my dad died when I was eight years old. And, uh, you know, I used that as an excuse for a lot, a lot of my life. And I look back on it now, and I see that, you know, it actually allowed me the ability to become stronger in learning to get past some of the things that I let myself get involved in. And if we can look back on those things and see where now in life, it might have been something that really helped us become stronger. You know, I, I don't want that to be taken out of context by any means. Uh, uh, you know, we, we take some of those situations sometimes and, and it, it leads us, we use it as the excuse to go to the addictive behaviors and so forth and so on and use it as an excuse all our life, you know. But... Um, so it can have a positive or negative effect. Let's go ahead and turn to page 12. When life hands you lemons. So people are faced with challenges, setbacks, and disappointments every day. And these adversities can come from a variety of sources. For example, thousands of children every year are subjected to physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Others are born with birth defects, and some have learning disabilities because they were exposed to drugs and alcohol before they were born. There are those who are faced with sudden and catastrophic illnesses or accidents. And so if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about these things, if you're thinking about in your life, what of these things you might have been exposed to? What, what of these things have you exposed to others? Um, when you think about these things, take it, take it to heart, you know. Um, There are other people around that have had these things occur to them too. And so how we overcame these things and what we do with them is what's going to help others overcome them. There are those who are faced with the catastrophic illnesses and accidents, and these are a few of the problems people face within our society. And even if you never have experienced these major upheavals, you will certainly be disappointed in one way or another from time to time. Even the daily grind can wear you down unless you're constantly keeping a positive outlook on life. You know, are you? That's my question to you. Are you keeping a positive outlook on life? Are you looking at things optimistically? 
Are you, are you looking at everything and being thankful for where you're at? Being thankful that you do have food to eat. Being thankful that you do have clothes to wear. Being thankful that you do have shelter. Are you doing that? If, you're, if you constantly are looking at the negatives of what you're suffering, whether it be disease, whether it be the uh, result of an accident, whether it be because of... It says learning disabilities because you were exposed to drugs and alcohol before you were born. But what about the learning disabilities that we created ourselves by doing, abusing drugs and alcohol and nicotine and, you know, everything else that you can imagine? What about those disabilities? What about the lost memories, the lost ability to memorize and so forth? In all these things, you know, if we sit there and dwell on those things, we're not going to get anywhere in life. We're, we're doing what it says. we got that addictive behavior again, and we're giving up. We're giving up. We're giving into it. That's not being strong. That's not being courageous. It's not taking the knowledge that you've learned, that power, and using it for positive and for building up rather than negative and tearing down. You know, you can take all of those things I just mentioned and you can, you can spend your whole life saying, woe is me, oh, how horrible this is. And you know, that's how a lot of people end up committing suicide. That's how a lot of people end up getting addicted to the drugs and the alcohol. And, you know, they just, uh, they, they just can't see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, because they're not thinking positively. It's not an easy thing to turn from, but you can. So when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, I'm sure some things went wrong today at some point or another, I, I, I tend to look at it as not going wrong, though. I tend to look at it as another opportunity to work on whatever it is. And, and, and that's, that's what I like to... That's what I like to say to... Um, well, I don't want to be too, uh, I, I don't necessarily want to point, point, this, point any people out, but in, people I, in, in, in folks I deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I, I surely like for them to have a positive attitude, you know? I know some of the people I deal with have very intense things they're going through. And I know some have had very intense things take place within their lives. But we can't stop. We, we have to be thankful. We have to, we have to look at this and, and take those lemons and turn them into lemonade. So you can be overwhelmed and give up and be an addict on something, you know, like with, a, with addiction, but, but this leads to that negative attitude, depression, and feelings of helplessness. I often wondered how a student of the peaceful solution could be depressed. I'm not saying it hasn't occurred, and I'm not saying I haven't been there. But I've wondered. I've wondered how it could be taking place. How is it possible? It's because we forgot and we gave in. you got to go back and take the book off the shelf, take the book off the shelf and start again, you know? <laughs> it's there. The answers are there. So instead of being depressed and having feelings of helplessness, you can accept that the problem exists and look at it in perspective. You know, look all around you. Take all the influences and the, the negatives and the positives and every, everything around. And, and in, in proper perspective, look at it for what it is. It's an opportunity for you to deal with something in, a, in the right manner, in a positive way, so that you as a teacher of the peaceful solution, excuse me, you as a teacher of the peaceful solution can impair that knowledge, that power. Remember, I'm going to show you the top of that page again that, that William went over so well and that we've gone over slightly again tonight. But knowledge is power. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. You want to be powerful? Man, when you have the knowledge to overcome cocaine addiction, when you have the knowledge 
of how you overcame cigarettes. When you have the knowledge on how you overcame abusing alcohol, when you have that knowledge that you can impair to others, oh my, then you have the power that you can use for the right purpose, for, for, to build up. And that's what's awesome about this, this whole thing. So have you ever met, back on page 12, have you ever met someone who acted as if every disappointment was the end of the world? And that's all they talked about all day long? Kind of sucks the energy from you, doesn't it, sometimes? I'm sure I've been in that position before where I was the one doing that. So I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn anybody by any means, but I am telling you that there's a better way. He becomes so absorbed in his problems that he forgets that life goes on. Now, I can tell you, though, I have seen people that can complain about things, but they continue pushing on and doing whatever their job is, you know, to get it done. And, and, and so there's a certain amount of, of overcoming that with that action in itself. But I can say that if you're one of the people that do speak negatively like that and you have that positive trait of determination to get that job done that is awesome but i can tell you you'll be much more joyful if you'll work at at focusing on the the benefit for others that you are building in going through what you're going through the knowledge, the power that you are gaining in going through whatever it is you're going through. The knowledge and power that you and I have gained by going through whatever we went through in life. See, these are the things we have to think about. you got to think about the words that are written here and how it applies to life. Yeah, it all sounds nice, but you can't just read it and go away and do 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 do. You know, it doesn't work that way. Power, power. It's helping you build that knowledge that that is the power to build others up. So, using the positive character trait of optimism, which is the ability to look on the bright side of any situation. You know, of course, people use that, uh, is the cup half empty or is it half full, you know? And I don't know, I've thought about both ways on that right there, and I, so I'm not, not really, uh, really too sure. I guess it could work both ways, but uh, uh, the bright side of any situation is, okay, you had a flat tire going down the highway, you know? The car veered off and slammed into a fence or something, you know, and now it's all dented up and everything. Well. Guess what? It could have been a telephone pole. <laughs> it could have been something that was immovable, you know. It could have been much worse than what it was. And I've heard just today I've heard a couple stories from from you guys of things that occurred in your life early on where you had car accidents that tore up the car but you walked out of the place where the windshield used to be without a scratch on you and you know many things like that and you know, of course, some people could look and say, now the car's destroyed, look at that, without even giving thought to that they're still alive and unharmed, you know. Look at the bright side of any situation. So, using the positive, I, I'm sorry, I get kind of excited about, about this stuff right here, you know, especially when it's talking about how we can turn those things around and use those things in our life to help other people, you know. So using the positive character trait of optimism, which is the ability to look on the bright side of any situation, as well as determination and courage, see, it's all of them, it's not just one, it's all of these things, synergistic, working together, will enable you to rise above and move beyond any hardships or difficulties you might face. When you deal with the disappointments that life sometimes hands you in a positive manner and learn from them, and I'm not trying to make light of any of these things that anybody here has gone through, the things mentioned in the first couple paragraphs here are, are massive things that we've gone through, several, several of us uh, and, and others have, have gone through, and 
if we focus on that negative thing all our life, we're not getting anywhere, we're giving up. You can turn that around and look at the great benefit it is going to be for others, man. So you can learn from them and you can build and strengthen your moral character. Accept responsibility for making a difference in your life and lives of others. There you go. This is part of acceptance with determination along with the information you can learn in the peaceful solution. You can find a way to take the lemons life hands you and make lemonade. So don't allow life's challenges to get you down or cause you to lose hope or cause you to give up. Instead, let them motivate you to succeed in reaching your full moral potential. I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. It's been a great honor and privilege to speak with you and help try to impart some of the knowledge that I have about some of these things in hopes that it will help you become a better teacher of the peaceful solution and it will help your students in the things they're going through in life. Our next class is going to be, uh, let's see, uh, three more days, four more days, well, Wednesday at 5.30 in the afternoon for everybody out there, uh, Central Time, and should end right about 6.30, as we always try to do, to give everybody plenty of time to get something to eat and get plenty of rest. So thank you for coming, and we sure do appreciate it. <laughs>